Good morning, folks. We've got a number of cool science stories to hit today. Got a bit of space weather to discuss as well, so we're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star with the southern active region beginning to depart, coronal holes still approaching center disk, a filament destabilized on the north polar crown but shifted further northward. And so when Soho Lasco C2 camera showed the small CME heading out of the 10 o'clock position, I had to quickly go back and see if there was any high coronal release visible on SDO, and indeed there was not. But luckily, from where this eruption came, we can use the satellite behind in Earth's orbit a few months to see that side of the sun. Stereo A caught the filament eruption on the north, not a very large one, which is why the CME is slow and weak. And speaking of which, that describes the solar wind as well. With days before the coronal hole stream arrives, we've dropped into low KP territory and are at risk of getting a cosmic ray health alert on the disaster prediction app later tonight. Let's go to India next, where, even though we know it's usually bacteria and other microbe related when earthly waters change colors, the shift here from normal aqua hue to pink meets the eye quite ridiculously. In truth, the sharp change likely occurred because of the change in water level, spiking the salinity and proliferating ultra-rare bacteria. Due to its saline and alkaline condition, this lake houses some species not found anywhere else in the world. Up next, real quick, got a link to new pollution maps from the ESA. Not just real time, but looks back in time as well. The full interactive program is linked at the article below. Up next, we're going out to the Cold Atom Lab. It is on board the ISS in low Earth orbit, and they are using lasers to slow down the motion of atoms until they reach the desired Bose-Einstein condensate level, where multiple atoms exist within a larger mass phase together, sharing their orbital energy clouds, and they're hoping to unlock secrets of physics not before known. Pretty cool article, linked below. Beyond Earth orbit, we indeed find the satellites and space probe fleet, and in a great piece describing their efforts to watch the sun, they share a very interesting readout from Poker Flats during a solar storm. Notice how the aurora excited the detectors, but then continues to leave them excited long after the auroral electrojet surges overhead. This is an easy way to see that when the storm dissipates above our heads, the atmosphere begins taking the energy distribution and spatial equalization activity. When the magnetic field is done storming, the solar storm isn't quite done yet. Up next, folks, highly complex science, but with very simple to understand results. The lifetime of a neutron is 14 minutes, 39 seconds before decay into protons and electrons. They know that, except when it's not. A 9-second differential in the latest study might not seem like much, but this measurement is key to the entire foundational principles of how we understand the universe evolution. If it's off by just one second, the Big Bang, reionization, recombination, dark matter, star formation, atom formation, and dark energy all proceed quite differently and they found it was off by nine seconds. Last but not least, folks, a brand new theory in mountain geology. It turns out they are scrapping everything about erosion and weather-driven determinations over peak mountain height. Apparently, they are 100% driven by the forces pushing up from below. This is not only a new idea in the science, but with our recent discussions about mantle heaving and large structure disruption below, one has to wonder how much activity can be stimulated in the mantle without the potential to see mountains no longer being mountains, land rapidly sinking while others rise. Modern solar storms are already able to induce current into the upper mantle, and so we must genuinely ask what happens when the rare 100x stronger flares occur, or God forbid the long period cyclical recurrent micronova, when the induction could reach the core. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.